API Gateway is a common sight in serverless architectures. In fact, RESTful APIs is one of the most popular workloads in serverless. So it's important to have a strategy for testing API Gateway APIs. For the purpose of this course, I'm going to focus on API Gateway REST APIs instead of HTTP APIs because it's just not widely adopted in the community and we're still pretty far away from feature parity. So I think the outlook for HTTP APIs is actually not looking great. But anyhow, our goal is to be able to gain confidence that our API is actually going to work. And we're going to make sure that things that can be reasonably tested are covered by our test strategy. So with that, let's start by looking at which part of our API need to be tested and how we should test them. Well, there's the integration target for our API, which in many cases is going to be a Lambda function. But there's a growing movement of using direct service integrations when you are simply transporting data. For example, when you have really simple CRUD operations. And a popular saying is that use Lambda functions to transform data, not to transport data. When you do need a Lambda function, you're going to want to make sure its domain and integration logics are well tested. But you also need to make sure that the function's IAM permissions is set up correctly so that it's able to talk to the right DynamoDB tables, for instance. But before the user request can even reach the integration target, it might need to be authenticated and authorized. And since API Gateway supports a number of different authorization mechanisms, we will need to test this to make sure that they're working as well. And you might also be using API Gateway to validate the request body. And that is, generally speaking, a good idea from both efficiency and security point of view because API Gateway doesn't charge you for unauthorized or invalid requests. In some cases, you might also use the API Gateway to transform the request before forwarding it to the integration target. And you might also transform the response from the integration target as well. So that's a lot of different things that we need to cover in our test strategy. Let's start with the Lambda functions which, as we discussed in the last chapter, we should encapsulate any domain logic into its own modules and make it work with domain entity types so that we can unit test it easily using marks and stubs. But for the integration points with other AWS services, we can write integration tests that execute the function locally against the real AWS services as much as possible. This gives us the feedback speed of local testing and the confidence from testing in the cloud. But the IAM permissions are best left to end-to-end -end tests. There are ways to incorporate testing IAM roles into the integration tests, but I find they add too much friction and not worth the hassle. And as I mentioned multiple times in this course already, many Lambda functions are really quite simple and there might not be a huge amount of domain logic to speak of, in which case, you might find it more efficient to test whatever little domain logic there are with the integration tests and skip the unit tests altogether. Okay, so that's our Lambda functions covered. Next, let's look at the different authentication and authorization options. Most of these can really only be tested with end-to-end -end tests, and I will show you how to handle each of these later in the chapter. But what if you have a Lambda authorizer? Well, you should cover them in your end-to-end -end test for sure to make sure the whole thing's working. But the feedback loop for this is going to be pretty slow if you rely entirely on end-to-end -end tests to find bugs in your Lambda authorizers. And since these are still Lambda functions, you can and should give them the same treatment as other Lambda functions and give them the full suite of tests depending on what makes sense, of course. So you would have unit tests if appropriate, plus integration tests to check its integration with other systems, and then cover them as part of your end-to-end -end tests. Okay, so two down, four more to go. What if you use direct service integrations instead and have API Gateway talk to, say, DynamoDB directly? Well, unfortunately, there's just no good way to unit test API Gateway's VTL templates at the time of recording. 
So your best bet is to test endpoints that use direct service integrations as part of your end-to-end tests to make sure they're working correctly. And the same goes to request validation, request transformation, and response transformations as well. These are all best tested as part of your end-to-end -end tests. Okay, so that's how we're going to test each of these moving parts. But wait, API Gateway have got a few more tricks up its sleeve and supports throttling, usage plans, as well as caching and uh, resource policy. How can we include them as part of our test strategy? Well, with things like throttling and usage plan, to really test them, you probably need to run a load test. And depending on where the thresholds are set, it can be quite costly and time-consuming to run these load tests. Not to mention the extra effort it's going to take to write and maintain these tests. So you really got to think about the return on investment here. And I think for most applications, the return on investment is just not there for testing these settings. But we'll talk about load testing in the context of testing in production later in the course. And it's also worth asking yourself constantly what you're hoping to ascertain with your tests and avoid getting into a situation where you're testing API Gateway itself as opposed to your use of API Gateway and how you've configured and connected different components together. Okay, so here's our strategy all laid out in front of us. Let me show you a concrete example of what it might look like when you apply this strategy to a REST API with a mix of Lambda and uh, direct service integrations and using different authentication and authorization mechanisms.